Hey guys, I'm so glad you're you're joining today. Um, I have to tell you something that the Lord showed me. I don't know. He seems to be speaking to me a lot in dreams lately. And now I'm not a prophetic dreamer, but I think. Uh, sometimes the Lord is just has seasons where he speaks to me and I know he's speaking to me. He was, he's been talking to me about the architecture, um, after COVID, like how churches will look and how, um, how different places will look. And the designs that he showed me that take into account uh, social distancing and everything, they're just absolutely beautiful. And lately I've been talking about God's bringing us into a new normal. And, I was, and I've been talking about uh, what the Lord's been showing me. And these, especially the sanctuaries, were so beautiful. They were spread out, but it was so beautiful. And he also showed me, um, you know how in stores um, they have uh, these cl the clothing and the pants? He also showed me that in the future, um, it's going to be these beautiful, like, N95 material mask, masks that, that we can wear going out. I'm saying all that to say that this, new, that this thing after COVID won't be so bad. It will be different, but it will be bad, and some things will go back to normal, and some things will go back to normal, but it'll have different changes, and he wants me to tell everyone that is worried, everyone that is um, afraid of what um, is going to happen after Will we ever go back to church again? Yes, we will. Will we ever gather again? Yes, we will. Um, will we ever, you know, go to the grocery store with that mask again? Yes, we will. Um, but it will be different for a while. And he says there is going to be beauty in the ashes. Um, so... It's going to be different, but it's going to be beautiful, and it's going to be um, it's going to be he's going to take the fragmented pieces um, that we now think are fragmented pieces and are um, is just going to make them beautiful. And I know. And I can see the post now, um, like Rachel, don't, don't give the devil any room. This is all, all from Satan. This is not how God wants it to be. Um, and all, all of this stuff. And I say to you guys who would say that, I'm saying that he's doing something that we haven't seen before. This is something that we haven't seen before. Usually when we see pandemics, it's, it's usually just in one place, but the whole world is suffering with this to different degrees, depending on where you live. And, um, He's trying to take us all into a new version of who he is. We, we need to kind of toss away what we've known before and be open to what he has coming. Because 
what he has coming is something that the world has never seen, which I've said before. It's something that I have never seen. It's something that uh, this generation or previous generations have never seen. And we just need to be open to the change. And you know, a lot of people say that they're open to change, but really they want things to go back to exactly where they, what they were. I was watching uh, someone and I uh, like someone who had to cancel their conference and they were saying how disappointed they were and what they were going to do for next year's conference. And I sat there and I thought about, um, and they were talking about this new online thing that they were going to do for their conference. And I, and I, I sat there and I thought about it. I thought, what if God wants to do something new with that conference? What if God wants to do something new in your ministry? What if God wants to shift some things to a place where you have never seen them before? Uh, I think we really need to let go. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to let go of what we've always known. But if we don't let go of what we've always known, we will never go to where we've never been. And I know it may be scary because like, it's so uncertain. You're like, um, how am I going to do this financially? How am I going to do that financially? But all I have to tell you is God will take care of you. He'll never, he'll never leave you. And I'm, a, wa a walking testament to this. He'll work things out. He will, he will do certain things that you won't even expect. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you two stories. Um, okay. Uh, in my build, in my building, we still have the laundry coins. And usually in ordinary times, I used to go to the bank and get my own laundry coins. And wheel trans, the wheelchair bus service for those who don't live here, live in Toronto, um, used to take me there. But now there are two, there's two problems with that. The branch I used to go to is closed and the wheel, wheel trend is only taking to the grocery store and medical appointments. Uh, so I was like, oh Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? My sister lives all the way in Brampton, which is um about two hours away she can come by 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 highway but i it's too it's so far for sure just to bring me laundry money so i was speaking to the building manager because lot no to the manager of the organization where i get my care I was speaking to him and cause last time he gave me it. And then that other time it was um, given by my sister. So I was like, I don't want to ask my sister cause it's too far. And she was just here and it's a lot for her to come down uh, to the city from Brampton. And, um, and I don't want to ask this, um, the manager of the place where I get my care, because then I'll have to owe him an, another set of money, which I can't get cash right now. 
so um so i e i emailed like i gave up the ghost and i said not the ghost but i gave up my thing and i said to the manager i said i'm so sorry to do this um but i need more laundry money and he said uh, you have to email the manager of the building uh, to to get more laundry money. And I thought, oh my God. And I was so kind of reluctant. So I emailed him thinking that he's going to say, you know what, we don't do that. Everybody has to get their own. And then he emailed me back and said, no problem. How much do you need? And we accept e-transfer. So, so I e-transferred him some money and he was able to get me the amount of laundry money that I needed. So all that worrying, all that stressing about my laundry money and God already had it taken care of. And there's another story where uh, my groceries, um, the place that I usually get my groceries from, every time I logged on, they said groceries unavailable. So my sister again, hi, Michelle, would come down and give me groceries. But as I said before, she lives very far and I was reluctant again to ask her for groceries. And the day that I needed groceries, I logged on and it said, delivering from this date to this date. And I thought, oh, and it was so fast they were here the next day and i'm saying that god will take care of every need i know you're worried i know you're stressed but god will not not leave you he didn't leave you and he didn't leave me in my laundry money he didn't leave me for my grocery shopping he always provided some things when I need it, whether it was my sister, whether it was the building manager, whether exactly when I needed groceries, it opened up for, for shopping again. Uh, times not as frequent, but at least I was able to get groceries. So God cares even about the little things. God knows who you are. So don't be afraid of what's coming. Embrace what's coming because God knows it's going to be better than what we have now, what we had before. And he wants to do something so new, so mind blowing. I can feel this, that we just are in awe of him. We should already be in awe of him, but he wants to do something so incredible. But if we keep on holding on, like I wish it was back to normal, or oh, I wish we could do this, if we do this, he can't do, he can't work in that. Because if we're wishing that things will be the same, there is no room for us to do something. There's no room for him to do something new. And he wants to do something new. This is going to be a great adventure. And I just cannot wait to see what he's going to do. Um, and it is just awesome to think about. Um, just even how, how he's going to, he, he showed it to me so cool, uh, 
how he's going to incorporate the screening questions on this little screen. When you go into anywhere, the questions will be electronic. And when you, when you pass the door, it won't let you pass the machine until you answer all the questions. It was so cool how it was set up. Uh, the fact that we have to be screened is not cool, but the fact that it was um, electronic and automated was cool. It's just so amazing. And the sanctuaries, how they took social distancing into account and designed beautiful sanctuaries that were, were not close together, um, but were apart. It was just so beautiful. And uh, the new way that we were doing church was beautiful and wonderful and just phenomenal. It was, it was really just something to see. Um, so it's going to be different, but it's going to be a beautiful different. And um, the lessons we learned from this time, the medical lessons we learned, the financial lessons we learned as a world, the, you know, lessons about child care and lessons about uh, contagious viruses. We'll take that into the future and become a better world. And the devil will not be able to attack us again as a world like this. Because we will be prepared. And he's making something beautiful out of this mess. I can see it. I can sense it. It's awesome uh, to even think about. I will see you later. Bye. Expect the great. Expect the great. It's awesome. I'll see you tomorrow for story time of Sunday. Bye.